We have spent six months digging, reviewed tens of documents, spoken to officials to uncover what really is behind the ghost health centers of Untungamu district. But in that area, there is not even a drug shop. We think we have the smoking gun. Is there in your community a health center for called Drabarata Health Center for? No, no, we have the village sale. These people are in the payment site, but they don't appear on the payment. For years, the district has been operating with over 20 ghost health centers with people paid on government payroll, yet the residents are not aware of these health centers. It never existed during my time of work. Government has lost billions of shillings through this financial hemorrhage. Because they are the ones that contracted this company and they shouldn't have paid this company. We now know who is responsible for manipulating the system. We cast a spotlight on the ghosts of Untungamu. Uh, let me just quickly a bit shift away from the actual cracks of the central storyline of the documentary. I'm, I'm so sure that while you were shooting, there are other things that caught your eye. Um, for many people out there, they imagine Tungamo is that district that has everything in order. Probably has um, the service delivery gaps that are probably not as clearing as they are in other districts. Of course, because of the uh, uh, the fact that uh, the president has roots there, the first lady, that's the birthplace. So you imagine that almost it's not one of those districts that is suffering from many uh, service delivery gaps. Uh, but, but I'm so sure when you are doing this documentary, there are things that caught your eye probably that you want to share with the public to, have to, to, to paint a picture of what Indungamo is like. Is it like any other districts? Does it have the same challenges? Uh, or it is one of those blessed districts, the favored ones? I think if you look at, <laughs> if you look at the, the comments on, on, on the video and indeed on the Twitter conversations that we've had, Many people from the West have been writing, oh, you, so you guys thought that we from the West you know, are living in heaven, but we actually also have similar challenges. Hmm. There are so many things that we did not include in that investigation that we saw, because anyway, when you're doing a story, you have to be laser focused. Otherwise, you lose the point of your story. You lose the direction of your story. One of the things that we did not include in that story and something that we have on tape and we filmed, I'm actually scared to put it out now uh, because then it may look like it's an attack on the first lady's district or something. Maybe I'll get the courage one day to put it out. <laughs> but for now, I, I want this to first of all fizzle out, but maybe I can share with you what we saw. Ntungamu, in that sub-county, of Rashamire, they have a challenge with access to water. What we saw is that there is a stream that goes through that people are actually fetching water from. So you find kids with bottles fetching from a stream that is, as you may clearly see, contaminated because there are cows drinking from the stream. Just next to the cows, you have a child who is having a small bottle, water bottle, getting water and drinking direct. There is a woman who is fetching water in a jerry can, putting it on her head to go to, to use. Basically, it's Kavuyo. When I talked to the health, to, 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 to the LC3 chairperson, he said, this is our main source of water. And I was heartbroken because there are some things I take, we take for granted in Kampala that you can open a tap and get water. But there are people who actually use water streams as sources of water. 
So I asked, has government put up any, you know, like deep water holes to help you? And this guy told me they put up one, but it dried. So we, we don't have where to get water. For those that have money, they have to pay a border border to go to the next sub county to collect water. Now that is a big, a big challenge. So access to water also remains very, 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 very important. The other thing is access to education. Did you say education? Yes. I think that... Yeah, the, that's minister, how... yeah, the Minister of Education is from Tungam? Yes. We, the, there are so many challenges with access to education in Tungam. And one of the people I talked to said, look, the quality of education in those schools, the people in Tungam do not want to take their kids to private schools. So there's a guy who set up a private school, to public schools, sorry. There's a guy who set up a private school and all the people there take the kids to the private school. It's only for the broke that take their kids to public schools. Now, Ntunum as a district is a rich district. People there are hardworking. And that's the thing I envied. I'm like, my goodness, everyone has a plantation of bananas. Everyone has a cow or two. You know, there are no grass-touched grass houses in Ntunum. I did not see, at least in the sub-counties I saw, you know, they, they, they are not your typical village, you know. The, the people there have, they have some money. But this person was telling me, they, actually, I visited the private school and they told me, we got so many first grades in, 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 in last year. And, you know, our school fees is between 400, 500,000 body. But she told me I'm, 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 I'm already full. So I visited the public school and, you know, there are a few kids in there and teachers, whether they want to teach, there's heavy teacher absenteeism, there's, you know, which I think should change. Now, Ntunam also has its unique challenges as a district, which I think, just like any other district, need to really um, sort. We thought that decentralization will help bring services closer to people. Has it done that your guess is as good as mine i think every district has its unique challenges i mean just look at our district of kampala don't even go to Ntungam. we have potholes everywhere and this is the face of the city every road that we're driving on has potholes every road literally has potholes but this is our district this is the district which has a whole executive which has a whole council which has, you know, uh, people who are earning fat salaries but driving on bad roads. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so public service delivery, even for us in the city, is really challenging. So I think that Ntungamu, and indeed the western part of the country, has challenges that we also face. Um, in Buganda, there may be worse challenges in, in Zombo, or worse challenges in Karamoja, but we need to pay attention to public service. Public service. Let me give you a short positive story uh, as I wrap up, Felix. My grandmother passed on yesterday and she has been battling liver cancer. She passed on in Chirudu, at Chirudu Hospital, which is located uh, along Salama Munyonyo Road. I think that's much in the division. Much in the division. Yeah. Um, so, she has been there. What I have seen is public service at its best. Not even because maybe all oh, Solomon Seranya is a, is a celebrity, is a journalist, what is he doing here? You know, maybe we attend to him and, you know. I went to the emergency ward and I was amazed at the hard work that medical people are doing. I was amazed at the level of cleanliness at Chirudu Hospital. I was amazed at the level of order. If you're going to the pharmacy, there are chairs there and they, some, they queue, they call you and then you, you know, there's someone who is ushering you. Next is you, next is you. I, 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 I couldn't believe it. I, could, I just couldn't believe it that Chirudu Hospital is offering all these services. And 
you know, my aunties were telling me, we have been using some of the most expensive medicines. If you've had a, a, a liver patient, you know that albumin is very expensive as, as a drug. And we were not paying a single coin. And I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Even when she passed on, we just paid for, you know, because we're in a VIP suit, so we just paid for, you know, accommodation, which is fair enough because we've been using power, we've been using water, and we went into the VIP section. But I was amazed at how public service has changed in Chirudo Hospital. Right from the gate, where, you know, you come and they ask carries greet you, you register in the book, they find you parking. You know, when you're walking through, you know, the reception area, it's just amazing what I experienced firsthand. And I think this is the second place I've seen public service at its best. I think the first one was the dental department at Mulago Hospital. The dental unit is absolutely organized and they provide state-of-the-art services and they work on so many people. I think this is what public service should be. So what can we do in our different little spaces to actually improve public service? Because you pay taxes because we pay salaries because imagine my salary i get off money and i pay taxes every consultancy i do they talk of withholding fee you know we we pay taxes and that means that we, we deserve better but the thing is that we need to stand up and demand for these services i think that for me is the thing that ugandans i don't know what we we have as a problem as ugandans that sometimes we say like ah tunacha kola munangi ebintu ebicho ah abasa abasa jetemboge rako mubareke you know basically we're living in this world Except i've seen some men like henry who are uncomfortable with things going wrong you know he just says no these things cannot be going on like this as a country and those are people who actually um intimidated by the state or you know or, 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 or scared and all that. Imagine a level of I've just done a story and everyone is worried about my life. Can you imagine? So we, we have resigned from our responsibility as, as citizens of this country to demand for better service delivery. You know, and don't expect a Muzungu to come from there to clean up your house. No, it's going to take us to get annoyed about public service delivery in this country that we get uncomfortable about it so that we can be able to get better services because we actually deserve them i was in i've traveled the world in felix i have i have been in africa in and, and in europe in in the americans everywhere there is a dedicated you know we, people have to come up with a resolve that we need something you cannot believe that government officials drive benzes and they drive x5s and all these big cars on bad roads it, it's just absolutely annoying you know that you have a speaker who actually last year alone i was mad that we spent 2.6 billion shillings to buy two cars Two goddamn cars for the speaker and the deputy speaker. Like, what is that? You know, and then you're like, ah, to you know, and I did that. So, and I asked, I asked Parliament, how could you? I asked Minister of Finance, so you allocated 2.6 billion shillings to buy cars. I'm like, oh, yes, we did because Parliament budgeted for it. What do you mean, Parliament budgeted for it? What do you mean that the Treasury actually released 2.6 billion shillings to buy cars? 2.6 billion shillings. I, I hear you. I hear you, uh, Solomon. I hear your your anger on that one. Um, and I'm glad that you are among the many that are, are, are using using your talent, using your space, using your influence uh, to make a difference. Um, indeed, I think the clarion call is that each one of us can do something in our own space to make Uganda um, a better place. Um, our time is running fast, but I have a couple of questions that I uh, want us to, uh, to 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 discuss. One of them is around uh, the fact that uh, uh, it's quite interesting because I think even somewhere in the documentary, one of the respondents, I think it was uh, uh, um, the Action Aid um, uh, Country Directors, uh, Xavier Joy, who 
struggle a hint, I don't even say that. Um, we, we, when you start to see people not fearing to steal from places that are difficult to steal from, you just imagine if someone is stealing from CPS. That's quite a bold act. So should, what's your take? Should we say, do you get the sense that probably uh, the corrupt are becoming more bold and they don't fear where to steal from, respective? What's your take? My thought is that I don't feel that like this government is really serious on fighting corruption. And I'm sorry, because we have all these agencies. We have the IGG's office. We have the office of the Auditor General. We have the Anti-Corruption Court. We have the State House Health Monitoring Unit. We have the, 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 the high-level forum to fight corruption by the ministers. You remember when they were asking for money? Uh, that we want a budget. Imagine uh, they came up with a high-level forum for ministers to fight corruption. All these agencies have been put there. What? I feel that this country need a radical sh needs a radical shift. Do you do you two think weeks ago, two weeks, two weeks ago, President Paul Kagame hmm. arrested and put a minister to prison? for accepting a bribe yeah. of $200. Hmm. Mm -hmm. $200. $200. $200 is in jail right now. Yet, yet country, those behind the Mabati are, are still enjoying the, the, the offices and the privileges. I mean, the DPP no. dropped the charges. Think about that. Even with the overwhelming, overwhelming evidence, the DGP. Do, you, you, do you think, um, you, you mentioned that this, the heads are starting to roll in, in Tonga, you, uh, but at the same time you don't believe that it will help. you think, uh, do you believe at some point um, that um, probably something will happen in Tonga that will have a ripple effect in elsewhere in other districts? No, I think that already there's some stuff that is happening. The thing about sometimes just doing things for cameras and for the show is that they are not sustainable. So I want to see, you know, something that is, of course, it's going to be big, everyone. You know, I know that government is starting the migration of the data from the integrated uh, personnel and payroll management system to the human capital management system. Mm -hmm. And they have started that migration. So if public service is really, really serious about cleaning up this mess, otherwise we will find that this mess will end up onto the new system. So. I believe that if we are committed to actually closing some of these loopholes and make things work, this country will be a better place. But it takes political leadership. The buck stops with you as a father. Omwana tasura kujana fuka muntebe no mgamba o bambi. No, you can't. Yeah. You can accommodate that for when the kid is maybe one year one year or you know he's saying okay maybe he's just trying to the moment they clock one and a half years or two years i beat you up mm -hmm. otherwise next time when guests come that kid will come and we will in the in in the chairs yes they will look at us Bagam, imagine you come to my house and then like her. Oh, we, what impression do you come up with? Yeah, sure. The back has to stop with leadership. And that's, that's why I'm saying that the president should be solely held accountable for the mishaps that are happening here. The back stops with him. You know, and, and that's why I asked the State House Monitoring Unit uh, Executive Director. I said, Dr. Namara, the president should be held accountable. And he laughed it over and said, no, it's not the president. It's the people around him. But if the people around him are not delivering, then he, they should be held accountable themselves. And so that he can suck them and put in people who are delivering. Wow, interesting. So we, uh, the of it, if we yeah. fail to put accountability and blame on leadership, then we're losing it. It takes political leadership to fight corruption. There must be a political willingness to actually fight corruption, or there must be a political willingness to provide better services. And that means you have to put penalties to getting things wrong, 
and reward to getting things right. My children know that in case they do anything wrong, mommy will beat them up. It is that simple. If you do something right, daddy will reward you, which is which is good because daddy rewards mommy beats. It's, it's, it's good. But, but there must be some sort of accountability. Okay. You, 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 you do something, something has to be done. And I think Henry calls it shifting the needle. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I just have, uh, I think, uh, enough time for about one one question. Uh, which, which, uh, I, I've been looking at the views um, on, on, on that documentary on your channel, the AIJ channel. I, I think in the first, in less than 24 hours, the first time it premiered, on the 20th of July, um, quickly the views were around 8,000 views. And as we speak now, it's over around 49,000 views. What makes this documentary unique to attract such um, interest within the public? So I, th I think that we need to study the dynamics of the audience. The dynamics are changing. Before we used to fight for television, mainstream media, Oh, please, oh, please. No. Now the internet has leveled the ground. You can actually do good content and people consume it and people interact with it. That same video on TikTok has over 20,000 views. That same video on YouTube, on, on Instagram has so many views. So when you compound all those views, it gets about 60 to 70,000 people who have consumed that content and have interacted with it. The audience is online. People want to leverage on the power of the internet to actively participate in the way they are governed, right? And that means that we need to leverage on that, what the internet has brought, has brought with it. It's no longer social media. It is now virtual reality that a story that you put on YouTube can actually push the auditor general to send auditors, that can actually push the IGG to send teams that can actually shift the needle, that you have people talking in their closed circles. And in these closed circles are people who are supposed to contribute to the change. So it is real. I think that's, that's, that's where the, it is going. But also, it speaks about the power of investigative journalism. Just that one story could have a ripple effect that could change the course of history for this country. And that speaks about you know, the quality of investigation you know, moving away from the petty journalism to actually do evidence-based investigations and the hard work of doing this story. So, and also, I always, you know, tell the people I'm training or the people that I talk to is that journalism is about people. When you remove people from journalism, you're making noise. It's just noise. And I always tell people that whichever stories that we do, we need to be mindful why should the audience care that you're doing that story? Right? Why should the audience care? And we need to answer that question as journalists. I'm doing this story because we are losing money. Because they are, then the services are not good. And that is the need that, for me to do this story. So it speaks to you know, journalism and its role in contributing to the change that we want in this society. And also bringing in people to actually interact with that content and be part of the cause. Journalism can rally community. Mm. Journalism can rally generation to stand up and demand for what they want. Great. Uh, okay, uh, that's, that's uh, Solomon Saranja. In your parting shots, um, what do you think? You've partly touched it, but Part of your parting shots, what you think um, the citizens, what is their role? Um, what, what should the citizens do with this information that you've been so generous to put out there? What next? You've done your part. What about the viewer, someone who has watched it? What do you want them to do? Ugandans forget very fast. We always love to move on to new things. You know, so what's the next big thing in town? Mm. Maybe because we never run out of scandals. The iron sheet scandal has since phased out. I don't think if you opened the daily last week, you found any story around the iron sheet scandal. We have since moved on. I think that's, a, that's the complacency that we need to stop. We need to resolve. And I think it's a role of civil society to reawaken these conversations. 
you know, the Mabati scandal passed on like that, and we've since moved on. It's the role of civil society to reawaken government and say, look, it is not over until it's over. What happened to the Iron Sheet scandal? Can we revisit it? What happened to the Ntunga Munk scandal? Can we revisit it? You know, what, what, what were the actions that were taken? Can we push government? Can we make government uncomfortable? Can we give them sleepless nights, be in their faces to actually account for this country? You know, I want the president to address this country to talk about what happened in Ntunga or what happened in the Iron Sheet scandal to come out and, and, and show his leadership that this is what we're doing about it. This is why we're getting serious about this, you know. And so for me, I think that all of us have a, a, a role. If you're an accountant, leak this information to the journalists. If you're a doctor, provide this intel. You know, let's work together to make our country a better place. Right. Uh, there you have it, uh, the last words of Solomon Sarandja. And, and, and just keeping a bit, uh, you, you gave a success story of uh, Chirudu, but the Chirudu you see is as a result, I remember there was a time when Chirudu was in, in the press over social media for the wrong reasons. I think they took the feedback well, and they're improving, giving your feedback on how they have been treating your patient. Um, so um, it's important that all of us, we are... Uh, put out these things that don't necessarily uh, uh, make Uganda a better place. We, we, we report on them, we talk about them, we hold the leaders accountable. And uh, those small, small acts will eventually uh, turn into um, big changes that we are looking for. That was Solomon Saranja, who is the, uh, the winning, award-winning investigative journalist and is also the executive director of the African Institute for Investigative Journalism, AIIJ. Um, is also um, um, the lead investigator behind the documentary, the Anto, the, the Ghost of Ntungamo. I Like we said, it's this, this documentary is, you can, if you don't get watched it, you can watch it on the AIIJ uh, YouTube channel and you should be able to understand um, um, what's the crux of the matter that we've been discussing. Solomon, thank you so much for making the time, for sharing out your heart. Um, your experience and for the work you're doing, we really do appreciate and thank you for being part of this conversation. And uh, my name is Felix Kafuma, who was the host for the show and allow me to bring it to the close. Until next time, bye-bye, take care, God bless. <laughs>